there are times when you want to issue a refund to a customer and that would be if a customer has purchased something and paid in full and you want to actually give them their money back that's the difference in a refund and a credit a credit usually sits in their account until you just credit the money off of your books whereas refunds you actually give customers their money back let me go ahead and show you how to create a refund we're going to create a refund receipt, but before we can do that, we need to go ahead and look up our customer and see what it is that we're actually going to refund them for. This is Duke's Basketball Camp. If you notice, they have an invoice here for $460.40 that is paid in full. I'm going to click on invoice to actually open this up, and you'll see that the second line are some garden rocks that they purchased from us. They purchased six of them at $12. And let's say that they're going to return three of them at $12 because they didn't need all six of these. We're going to go ahead and close this now. And now we're going to create our refund receipt. We're going to go over to the new option on the navigation pane. We're going to come down to refund receipt. Here we're going to pick our customer's name. In this case, it's going to be Duke's Basketball Camp. You can see it pulls in their email and their billing address, and we just need to make sure we have the correct refund receipt date. Down here where it says payment method, this is how the customer actually paid you. They wrote us a check, let's say, and we're going to refund them from our checking account. If you're going to actually print them a check, then it's going to let you print this later or if you want to go ahead and print it from here you could leave that check number now let's go ahead and put in the correct product or service and we decided that this was garden rocks and so we're going to go ahead and choose that and remember they're returning three at twelve dollars and that makes thirty six dollars if the item was subject to sales tax when the purchase was originally made then quickbooks will automatically choose the tax option to give them their tax back as well. You'll notice this equates to $36. The total amount refunded will be $38.88. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and new at the bottom and now that refund receipt is done. I'm going to click OK here where it says it was successful and now let's go back and look at their account. If I'm looking at Duke's basketball camp you'll see here's the refund right here and you'll notice that it says it is paid. Now, if you want to actually go ahead and print a check, then all you have to do is over here, it says print check, and you'll notice that it automatically has Duke's Basketball Camp and a check waiting to be printed for $38.88. Just double check that you have the correct checking account at the top and make sure you have the correct check number that your check is going to be. Now if you were giving them cash, you would have chosen cash from the option back over in the refund receipt and then that would have just been done. That's really all you have to do at this point. You can actually go down and you can preview and print this and then that will be the end of it. There's the preview. You would hit print and it would print out. And that's how you create a refund for a customer. It's called a refund receipt. Let's go ahead and take a peek now at creating statements for your customers. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there. And click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.